Hello, this video explains what we mean by longshore drift. Um, this is something you need to know about for your coast or coastal landscape section. Um, and this is, a, this is for Edexcel A uh, GCSE Geography. Okay, before we begin, we just want to recap the key uh, physical processes that you need to know about. And just a reminder that physical processes are anything that changes the shape or the look of the beach. Okay, so there's five that you need to know about, and these also apply to rivers as well. So the first one is mass movement. Mass movement is the movement of sediment, so that could be rock or sand, downhill due to gravity. Okay, so it could be a cliff collapsing into the sea, that would be mass movement. Number two is weathering. Weathering is the wearing away of rock in one place. So the rock doesn't get taken away, it gets worn away and weakened in one place. Remember there are three types of weathering you need to, you need to know about, biological, chemical and mechanical. Number three, the third physical process is erosion. Erosion happens after weathering. So remember weathering is where the rock has been weakened or worn away in one place. Erosion is the wearing away of rock by moving water. And there are four types of erosion you need to know about, hydraulic action, abrasion, attrition, and solution. One we're looking at today is transportation, and this is about how sediment, so rocks or sand, are moved around by the, uh, by the ocean. And finally, deposition. And we can see in the picture here, there is sand being dropped onto the beach. Deposition means the, uh, the dropping of material by the waves. Okay, but longshore drift is what we're looking at today, and longshore drift is a type of transportation. Now, there are two very important key terms that you need to know uh, before we look at what longshore drift is, and they are backwash and swash. So I just want to show you this video to explain what they are. Um, if you've been to a beach in England, you'll know what swash and, swash and backwash are, or you'll have seen them. So let's have a look. Here's the wave coming onto the beach. This is our swash. You can see the swash coming up the beach here. And the backwash is when it pulls back down into the sea. So again, swash is when the wave comes onto the shore and it normally comes on at a bit of an angle. And the backwash always pulls down in a straight line and that's the wave coming back into the sea. Okay, so just a reminder, swash is the wave coming onto the shore, onto the beach. Backwash is when the wave goes off the beach. So what is longshore drift? Well, longshore drift is the zigzag movement of sediment along a beach. So here we've got a beach, which is this bit here. Behind this is the land in green, and down at the bottom, we've got the sea. Now, another very important key term you need to know about is something called the prevailing wind, okay? The prevailing wind is the direction the wind normally blows from. Okay, so wind changes direction, doesn't always blow from the same direction, but generally, it does generally on most days blow from one direction in the UK, and that just happens to be in the UK, the southwest, so it blows from this direction down here. Um, why is that important? Well, waves are created by the wind. So if the wind is blowing from this direction, it will push your swash, your, your waves, in this direction onto the beach. So let's imagine we've got some sand floating around in the sea over here. The first thing that happens is the wind blows the wave in this direction and this pushes the swash onto the beach. Remember the swash is this the wave going onto the beach. The backwash then pulls it off the beach and you'll notice the backwash is happening in a straight line. And the backwash will always go at 90 degrees to the beach. It'll always come down in a straight line. But that sand that's now floating around in the sea again will then be pushed by a new swash, a new wave, and that will push it back onto the beach like this. Again, the backwash pulls it off the beach in a straight line at 90 degrees to the beach. And you'll notice that sand over on this side of the beach or in the sea over here will end up moving in an, an easterly direction. It will move in this direction and it will end up over here. Okay, just want to show you that again. 
So here we've got the beach, here we've got the sea. So watch what happens to the sand that's floating around in the sea over here. Here's our prevailing wind. Remember this is where the wind normally blows from and it's blowing here in this direction. So let's watch what happens to our sand. So it gets blown on, the swash comes on at an angle, the backwash comes back at 90 degrees, again blown at an angle and you can see how the sand is zigzagging along the beach and therefore sand on this side of the beach over here or in the sea over here will end up on this side of the beach over here. Okay, so I'd like you to now read these two descriptions and I'd like you to point at the screen. So which one do you think is longshore drift? Is it the zigzag movement of sediment along a beach or is it the zigzag movement of sediment up a beach? So can you point at the screen and decide which one you think it is? The correct answer is A, the zigzag movement of sediment along a beach. If you got that right, let's continue. If not, please go back and check your understanding. Now, sometimes we don't want longshore drift to happen, okay? And the reason why is because if the sand continues to move down the beach, it means that this area here will eventually lose its beach and all the sand will disappear. So sometimes we build something called a, a groin, okay, which is like a wooden post that goes into the sea. And this is to trap the sediment and stop it from getting past the groin. So in this example here, here we can see the zigzag movement of sand going along the beach. If this groin wasn't here, the sand would continue to move along here and the beach here would probably disappear. But because a groin has been built, the sand gets trapped behind it and it can't get past. And therefore it protects the beach and the beach won't get smaller. And this is what they look like. So if you go to many beaches in England, you'll see that uh, lots of these on the beach, so they're normally made out of wood, and they extend down into the sea and they stop the sediment uh, from, from going past the groin and it allows the beach to build up. Okay, so let's have a little bit of practice. There are four key terms up here. There are four boxes. Can you please pause the video uh, and can you try and work out which box goes with which description? So pause the video in three, two, one. Okay, so the first one, our backwash should be down here. Backwash is the wave coming off the beach, and that always comes in a straight line. The prevailing wind is down here. Remember, the wind is what causes the waves, and the prevailing wind is the direction the wind normally blows from. Our swash is the wave coming onto the beach at an angle, and therefore, the direction of longshore drift on this beach is in this direction. So it's moving the sand over here will end up over here. Okay, um, if you are in year seven, eight or nine, you can now stop the video. If you are in year 10 or year 11, can you continue watching the video? So we're going to look now at uh, an eight mark examining question. So below in this picture, we have a bar. So we've got a sandbar along here. Behind the sandbar is a lagoon, which is a salty uh, lake that's formed behind the bar. On here, we can see a north arrow. So this direction is north, going that way. Therefore, this is east, south, and west. We can see the prevailing wind is blowing from this direction. And here we have a scale. So we can use this white line with a ruler to work out on the, on the picture how big 100 meters is. Okay, now the first thing to remember with an examining question uh, in GCSE geography is you need to refer as much as possible to the figure or the map or the diagram or the picture that's being given to you. Okay, so I would always begin with, I can see in figure one that. The next thing you need to do is to pick out your evidence. Okay, so if we have a look here, there's a couple of bits of evidence you might want to include. First one is there is a, a bar and we can say it's about 200 meters long. Now, how do I know that? Well, if I get a ruler and measure this line here, we can then measure with a ruler along here and we can make a rough guess about how long the bar is. So I would say 
This distance here is about two of these white lines, and therefore it's about 200 meters. The examiner will accept a bit of variation on that, so as long as you're roughly right, that's okay. The other thing we can say is longshore drift is moving sediment north. So sand is zigzagging along here. Remember, longshore drift is the movement of sediment along the beach. Uh, so the sand is moving in this direction. It's heading north. Behind the um, bar, there's a 100 meter wide lagoon. Again, if you measure this distance here, you can measure that on here. And it's roughly about 100 meters wide. And finally, the prevailing winds in this picture is coming from the southwest. Remember, this is north, so it's coming from this direction. Now, this is an examining question uh, from paper one. So remember that four marks are for explaining exactly how a bar forms, and four marks are for specific evidence from the source. So to get those second set of four marks, you must include all of these pieces of pieces of evidence as you write your answer. Okay. Right, I'm going to leave this on now. So I'm going to leave it on this slide. Uh, I'd like you to pause the video or to stop the video now and have a go at this eight mark question. Um, you can show that to your teacher and your teacher will mark it for you. And just finally, a quick reminder, longshore drift is the movement of sediment along a beach.